Pride is all about being who we are, period. No shame, no hesitation, no holding back, no guilt. Pride is about accepting and getting accepted. However, Florida's present laws make it difficult for everyone to be themselves, including LGBTQ plus children and teachers. Hence, it is crucial to create a platform and have patient ears where the community could share its stories, its fights, its struggles, and its hopes. Talking about the struggles students, children, and teachers of the state of Florida have to go through as members of the LGBTQ community, the presence of today's guest on Unapologetically Queer holds huge importance. Our two guests, Lana Hubner Mims and Kaylee Miller Owens, are queer and come with years of experience as teachers. Lana is a welcoming and skilled personal trainer now, having left education as a former teacher, while Kaylee is currently very experienced as a fourth and fifth grade teacher in reading and writing and having taught in both public and private schools for the past 10 years. Welcome to Unapologetically Queer. I am your host, Al Ferguson, and I am proud to talk to some of the most interesting people of our LGBTQ plus community that are the most interesting to the LGBTQ plus community. This program is unique because it is an unedited conversation. At Hotspots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network, our mission is based on the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community. We believe our history and our future are based on the communities of the Black LGBTQ plus community, Latino, lesbian, and queer women, trans, students and youth, seniors, HIV AIDS healthcare, business, social justice, and faith. Teachers should get appointed, as we talk about those pillars, based on their qualifications and their ability to help students to grow at their own pace in a secure environment where everybody is welcome and every thought and idea under the sun is up for discussion, including diverse culture, sexuality, gender identities, politics, and, and much more. So let's welcome Lana Hubner Mims and Kaylee Miller Owens. And um, I uh, welcome you to the show. And I understand right off the bat uh, that both of you are unapologetically queer. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's absolutely. Correct. Unapologetically <laughs> queer. You have an asterisk in di identifying as uh, pan. Yes. And you identify as a lesbian. But in the broad umbrella, both of you queer. Absolutely. I imagine for a long time. <laughs> Good long time. A long time. All right. Long time, yes. Well, I, I want to start. Um, this is an interesting and a unique opportunity to talk about teachers. First off, teachers are scared to death to talk to me um, because uh, there's so much potential backlash, political um, wrangling that goes on in the politics that we're watching in Florida. We'll talk about the politics and he who shall not be main, named, <laughs> but we will name him yeah. uh, in a little bit. But but tell us both, why did you all get into the profession of teaching. Why did you want to teach in Florida? Well, I was born and raised in Florida, so uh, I've never left, in fact. And um, I I knew I wanted to be a teacher from an early age. I was in high school and I was working with, uh, you know, uh, American Sign Language at my school and we were teaching first graders. And I just knew from then that I, I needed to be there for the kids. Yeah. And, and uh, Lana, why did you want to teach? Mine was more of an accident. Um, I've always been a mentor type, but teaching wasn't what I had had my eyes set on. And um, it just actually was the right place at the right time. I was looking for a job and one of my former coaches, because I'm a former track and field athlete, one of my former coaches told me about a school that needed a PE teacher. And I was like, well, I don't have like a teaching degree. I, I love everything that has to do with the physical body and I could teach that, but I don't know if I need to have a degree. And they said, well, put in your application, go in for the interview, see how it goes. And they hired me on the spot. And when I met the kids and started doing teaching, I was like, wow, this is something that I love. I've always 
love trying to further education for everyone because I think that it's a big important thing and especially for me I always love learning so I was excited to have other kids get excited about learning you know uh, it's interesting to me and Kaylee you teach reading and writing yeah. you did physical education um, uh, both of you at the uh, same school uh, elementary um, education my goodness I always think geez it would be so hard uh, to teach uh, in, in <laughs> elementary school. I just can't imagine it. But I also understand how important and valuable it is. And the most important influence of my entire life related to school was my fourth grade civics teacher that had us build Venice and describe the squares and the buildings and, and just made uh, the history and the geography of the world come to light. That requires a super special skill to allow a fourth grader to be interested in something and then to spark their interest. So it seems to me teachers are so incredibly important to our communities. Everyone always remembers one of their, uh, usually mm -hmm. one of their elementary school teachers. You know, there's, if not one of their elementary school teachers, one of their school teachers in general. Right. Yeah. Everyone can name one who has been, you know, impactful. In I'm curious life. with both of you and that being the case, um, um, you know, the politics of the last year and a half, um, don't say gay, the, the arguments that took place last year before the session, uh, everyone's saying the law was written so vague, it really didn't have anything to do with kindergarten through third grade. It was only the entry drug, as we make the joke. It was only designed to get you addicted, and then once they did, then the real expansion came, which turned out a year later uh, mm -hmm. to be true. Uh, you're at the tip of that sword, being identified as queer, as teachers. Um, before I ask you about that, do you, how has being queer affected you in the classroom? Does, does it make any difference at all? And I, I don't mean your sexuality. I mean your perspective of how you are as a teacher, how good you are as a teacher, your life experience as a teacher. Does queer interact with any of that? in your experiences at all? A hundred percent. Well, explain to me why. So I think it uh, it gives you a, um, a view as to like how to reach everyone, um, even the, you know, just anybody, anyone who experiences discrimination or, any, or stereotypes or anything like that, um, you can reach those children a little bit better. Like you don't even have to, come out to your students to be able to uh, be there for them uh, and know what they're going through. Uh, you can be a safe place. And I think being queer, you know how to make it a safe place mm. for your students. That's really important so for them. So the safety of the experience of LGBTQ community, the whole point of the Stonewall riots in June Pride Month that we celebrate, you, what you are saying is you come at it from the perspective of the inclusiveness of the safety of your experience as child, as student. Oh, yes. That's very interesting. Absolutely. And, and how about you, uh, Lana, did, uh, did your experience, you, you, you didn't go to school to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. You end up being a teacher first. They have high need <laughs> yes. and, and they're willing to go, oh, well, maybe we don't need the degree, but you're still going to be a great teacher. Um, uh, how does being queer, a lesbian, um, does it have any impact of when you were teaching? Yeah, I, I think it definitely did, especially in understanding that I can be something different. I can be a model of something different. So I made sure um, as a woman that they could see me as strong and a leader and things that maybe they're not getting told initially. And that um, even in the way that I dress or my hair or whatnot, that there's options because I've had my students kind of be like, well, I thought only boys did this, or I thought only girls did this, or da da da. And being able to know that, hey, as, as a queer person, as a person of color, as a woman, I've already had to break multiple barriers and surpass certain expectations. And knowing that as kids grow up, having a model of something different, of options, of that they, oh, if I want to wear my shirt like this, like, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm not weird for it. I'm, I can be accepted. I see an example of it 
of someone who's strong and kind and loving that is able to be their purest and whole self. So maybe I, as a kid, can be my purest and whole self. It's very interesting. I'm curious for the two of you. you so your friends mm -hmm. uh, that were teaching at the same school, <laughs> uh, and and um, and 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 your friends with each other. Is it a different experience for you, both of you being queer women? And uh, does is, is there a different experience beyond being queer as a teacher in a school in the environment we're living in Florida and you being white and you being black? Are there any differences there that begin to implement in the in the classroom or no, it's the same? I would I would say uh, when people look at me, no one no one can really tell that I'm gay. Um, so I think a well, lot passable. of Right. <laughs> Uh, which kind of sucks, like, <laughs> being me, you know, because I feel like I always have to out myself to everyone. Like, <laughs> so, We're doing but, that right now on <laughs> unapologetic. <laughs> hey, if you didn't know. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, so I feel like I just get a lot of, you know, parents who automatically assume that I'm, you know, heterosexual. Um, and I think maybe that, in a sense... Yeah, is is a difference maybe and and lana any different for you as uh, being a queer woman of color does that play into i mean i do think it plays into it um a little bit more on a subconscious level mm -hmm. i i definitely make sure that i try my best to present myself in a way that any hopeful back of your mind stereotype that there might be that i'm already dismantling it yeah. and that you are able to really see and connect with me in a different way and it is different because there aren't many teachers that were at the school that we are that I used to teach at that were of color like me and so you do have literally some of the junior k little four-year-olds they look at you a little bit different and they they will say because they process they're just like your skin is brown it's different than mine. Why? And so within that, just even having conversations would be like, oh yeah, we all have melanin on our skin. You have some, I just have more. So it makes my skin a different, you know, those little conversations so that they know like, okay, it's okay. Like your skin color is different, but you still treat me kindly. You are still a teacher. You're still here for me and I feel safe and I feel protected by you. Awesome. And it can be that simple. But there is, it is, it's there and there's little underlying currents. And even with some of the older kids in middle school that I would teach that we'd get into more deep conversations and into aspects where they're asking me about my personal experience and they wonder if it's different and I can explain, yeah, in this situation it was, in that situation it wasn't. But them having access to someone that's slightly different. And I think that it does. It, it came up each year in different ways, just little currents of different things of otherwise they wouldn't have that same experience. They wouldn't have that point of view and perspective. And I think it's very important. for them. You know, it's that. it's interesting to me because both of you um, give such an amazing soundbite of how insidious what's going on in Florida and the passage of this law is. It's a OK for you because you're passable and no one knows you're queer. Right. It's not okay for you because you are needing to be able to discuss the questions that inquisitive um, students that want to learn need to ask. And now you can't in both instances. To the three people that uh, apparently do not have electricity or whatever it is of knowing what's going on in Florida, please <laughs> allow me to summarize the video. Uh, the passage of the Don't Say Gay Bill uh, is, um, is insidious, as I say. Uh, this legislative session, it became even more dire because they decided that it wasn't K through three, the challenge of, could you show us an example of how we're talking about gay for K through three. No, nope, that turned out not to be true. And the, the broad vagueness was expanded in this legislative session to include all the way to the 12th grade. And this is impacting and impacted the entire education sector uh, of the state of Florida. 
very severe, severely. The bill bans public school districts from teaching about sexual orientation or gender identity in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students. Now, please, I would like to meet the arbitrator and the decision maker of that definitional uh, definition uh, standard. When, when the this law is expanded, you've you've stayed, you've left, you've become a personal trainer. Um, when the law is expanded and you see what's happening in our schools, um, what do you think is the motivation for doing this? Um, schools are a place where above almost any other issue besides homework and showing up and almost any other issue, it's to challenge the thinking process in your classroom. This is the antithesis of that. Why do you think this is being pursued? What is? What do you think the ultimate desire of why you can't talk about who you are and you can't talk about who you are? Why are we doing this, do you think? I think it's because teachers have a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, sway, a lot of, um, you know, everyone looks up to their teachers. Everyone can remember a fourth grade teacher, a, you know, high school teacher, a middle school teacher who impacted them in some, in some way, uh, because we're, we're with, we're with children all day, m more so than maybe even their own parents sometimes. And, um, and, and so I think, I think maybe that's, I don't know. I can't, I can't say why these people are doing what they're doing because it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. And, and Lana, what do you think? Well, what do you think the, the goal here is the ambition? It's, that's a hard question. It, um, I do. I feel like the people who have been so quick to hop onto the bandwagon of these type of bills have gotten so used to centering themselves and centering their experience, mm -hmm. their point of view, that when, when other people, other experiences, other points of view want to say, hey, let's open this up, make sure we include this, make sure that everyone is within it, it no longer puts them at the center. And that's a loss of control. Yes, a challenge and a loss of control. And when you're no longer centered and you've been able to be centered this whole time and there was no question about you being centered, when you have to include other people and actually take into account other experiences, um, other ways of doing things, and if you've been told your way is the right way, it, it's very hard and it's, and it's scary and it's frustrating. And so to me, they see a world that is changing where they are not centered and it is only about their experience, but other people are now gaining voices, gaining strength, gaining um, visibility with things, even programs like this. And they're losing control of, no, I get to control the narrative. I get to always be the hero. I get to have these people and characters look like me, act like me, and show how diverse of layers there can be. But now if you guys are more centered, well, how come I can't always be the hero? How come I have to actually admit to your humanity and your depth and your Or admit to what they did wrong. Correct. Correct. You, you, if or you wrong. actually have everyone's story, you, cannot, you can no longer twist the narrative right. to always be the hero. Mm -hmm. And I, I do see a lot of people having that fear of, I don't want to be painted as the villain. I d anything but the villain yeah. and so both making you, it worse though <laughs> you, you, you zero in on the decision-making paradigm is they're living in fear mm -hmm. they're just fearful it's interesting to me because I have difficulty understanding why we would go the slavery didn't happen let's not talk about slavery it, it just it's so hard for me the lavender scare in the 50s and what mm. we did japanese internment in the 40s uh segregation and the issues in the 50s and the 60s in our schools um uh, what we did to uh gay men in the 80s and 90s mm. on aids these are facts these are not 
history is a fact. Right. And and the way you repeat, um, not repeating the same mistakes, is by teaching it. Right. Right. Yeah. And. And uh, I hear you loud and clear in terms of fear. It, this is a unique opportunity to talk about what's going on in our schools from a teacher's point of view in Florida. Uh, Kaylee is currently teaching a fourth grade, I believe. Fourth and fifth grade, reading and writing. Reading and writing. And Lana has made the decision this year to leave uh, teaching and education, was a physical education teacher, and now is a personal trainer. I, I'm curious from, from your uh, standpoint, and by the way, I would remind our audience, the reason why we're having, first and foremost, the ability to have this conversation is that they're not fearful because the school that you work at is a private school. Mm -hmm. And it is not dedicated under the threat of public funding from the sure. Department of Education in Florida right. and the governor, who is a presidential candidate of the United States. And they are affirming to your identity, both in terms of color and in terms of your sexual identification. Did I get all of that right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Our school is fantastically accepting. Um, and the first school that I have felt comfortable coming out to, the the parents and my students. And they talk about my wife and my daughter as if like it was just their sister or their mom. You know, like it it doesn't matter to the to the students and uh or to the parents even. They're, you know, my wife joins me in some of our events sometimes and comes and brings our daughter and and it's just a, a welcoming school. It's uh it's disappointing to me, frankly, that you say that because I'm thinking I'm happy for you. I, I'm disappointed we lost you, uh, but I understand why you would make that decision. But at the end of the day, the, infirm, uh, the affirming nature that your school represents as a private school, I'm thinking of literally the tens of thousands of people that uh, are LGBTQ plus that in don't have school the, yeah, that yeah. don't have what you have. I know. I know. I feel, I feel beyond lucky. I feel scared to ever lose my job because I, I it's like finding a needle in a haystack yeah, <laughs> there's you know I've been te I've been a teacher for 10 years and I've taught at many different schools public charter um, now private and I've never ever felt like this it's hard to find mm. you know one of the uh, principal things that we talk about or at least that we hear um, from uh, from the governor's mansion and the super majority of the GOP and the and the Florida legislature, and especially that really uh, difficult press secretary of Ron DeSantis uh, that says uh, LGBT people are one thing. And if you oppose, don't say gay, you're supporting the one thing that we say that they do, which is grooming. And they're groomers. What do you think about that phrasing in that the reason you can't have your wife's picture uh, on your desk in your classroom in public education in Florida is because you're trying to groom children. What's your reaction when you hear that that slur? Disgust, honestly. Yeah. It's very it's very telling at times um, when you villainize a group because it doesn't line up with what your narrative is and what you want. And within that, we, we do have certain institutions where there is a lot of child abuse. Yeah, and it the is- The Catholic Church? Yes, <laughs> it, 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 it is heavily in forward. religion. Right. And the fact that, okay, so we're, we're not going after that, but you're gonna say that this is grooming, but also again about the being centered is, well, when you have a picture of your family. I was uh, just about to how say is that. that like, yeah. how, how is, is that? that? So that's also so that's grooming? not grooming, right? <laughs> I'm like, because what what is it grooming towards? What what do you mean? What is the what's the end goal? Like, okay, are we grooming them to be gay? Do it within the queer spectrum? Are so then them you're to be kind, right? Like, so are to you grooming them to be talented in music and dance? Right, like, <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> Broadway. Yes, I just I, that's where I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? Because right. if if again, if you're gonna point the finger at us, you also always have to examine yourself. Say, okay, well, if I feel like when you do this, it's one thing, but when I do the exact same thing, it's perfectly fine. What what does that actually mean? How 
How do, how do you get there with that? Because I've had people flat out tell me, oh, the, well, the don't say gay bill, it's, it doesn't say don't say gay and stuff. It's not that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Fine. Tell me more about it. And they said, well, there's like an appropriate age to have a discussion about, you know, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do sex education too early. I said, okay, sex education is one thing. And what a family looks like is another. I said, there were times where in books, you were not allowed to have people of color in the book because it was just the decision maker yes. that made that decision. Yeah. Someone decided we don't want people of color there and interracial couples definitely were not allowed to be seen on TV in any sort of media. Could not right? marry until 1968. 1968. 68. That's, that's my mom's era. Clarence Thomas, by the way. <laughs> yes. But in that, in that exact same way that there was a time where like me being a person of color, I was not supposed to be seen. That is the same application that you're doing right now with the queer community is saying, no, there's like an appropriate age for, for, for what? I don't to even know what... one teacher who is in kindergarten through third grade that would even teach about like sex education. So where that even came from exactly. is, is disgusting in, in and of itself because they, they knew what they were It's doing. made up. They 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 know that's not up. yes exactly. it's it was made up it's not they what found is a loophole happening. to get what they wanted yes and to get them and you to. and again it's a scare tactic hey oh my goodness they're gonna teach them about sex like it it's just Never it's ridiculous happen. and it's it's so hurtful especially it's people that say that they support and love people of the LGBTQ community but then I will sit there and say like these are hurtful to us and now you said. There's nothing inappropriate about being part of the LGBTQ community. But then you just said, oh, but there's an appropriate age to show that. I was like, to show different families, to show a single parent home, to show a two mother home, to show a two father home. Why is there a certain age where that's appropriate to show that there is no family archetype? There is no superior family structure. What is superior is how you love and care for each other. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. You know, it's Here. interesting uh, to the point that uh, both of you have just made. That's how you came to our attention. Um, we read uh, this article that appeared in a newspaper, uh, in a newspaper article about how Lana talked about her students being curious about having a wife and accepting the different concept of family. And Kay Kaylee, you've uh, talked about uh, students coming to you and talking about uh, their sexuality and fears. Um, the newspaper article that we read, which was it talking about you or uh, the issue about students asking, do you have a do you have a photograph of um, uh, of your partner, your wife, in your classroom or? What was that? Well, that kind of goes with, um, I do, but it, you can't see it. It's very hidden. Um, and I've only ever gotten one question. It was after I came out of who's that in the picture. Uh, it was more so, I think, you know, because our school is a private school and very family oriented. Um, I think they just kind of heard their parents talking and, and, you know, or whatever. And that's how they kind of found out because I'm really not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll occasionally say like, oh, I, you know, brought my wife's keys to to work on accident. Now I need to go drive home and, and give them back to her. I'll be right back, guys. You know, like in passing conversations or whatever. But um, uh, I don't I don't know how they found out, mm. but it's just an open it's an open school. It's very one lucky. The, one of the other things I wanted to ask both of you about is um, that we haven't talked about is LGBTQ students. Uh, we're, right. We've been talking about uh, teachers, but on the student side, um, what do you think of the consequences uh, of what um, we're doing to our queer kids in school right now? What what are we seeing that's going to be the short term consequences of what's happening in Florida, the intermediate over the next couple of years as they continue in school, and then the long term consequences? So what do you think from your perspective from education? It's um. So I think back to to my experience in education uh, when I was in high school and trying to find out who I was and the name calling in the hallways and the fear of telling my teacher or them finding out because of, you know, X, Y, Z and the shame that I felt being who I was. 
um, and how just a couple of years ago, when uh, you know marrying your partner became legal in the United States, I remember that was so huge. And from that point until only a couple of years ago, I felt like this insane difference in the community here in Florida, in you know just walking on the street holding hands with my wife, and um, you know I felt like this great pride that it was okay finally until just a year or two ago when when all this started to happen and uh and then i now i'm starting to feel the same way i felt in high school like can i hold hands with my wife should i go to this community event or you know what it, can i hang a pride flag in my window um is that gonna have any repercussion uh so when you when you think of you know, short-term, long-term effects, like it, it's like we're reversing how far we had come. You know, even from the, you know, 20, 15, 20 years ago I was in high school to now how much improvement we made. And now it's kind of like we're regressing. I'm, I'm curious mm. from your perspective, um, Trevor Project, I know mm. both of you uh, know them well. Mm -hmm. um, Trevor Project says <clears throat> that bullying is significantly higher for LGBT uh, students. Uh, in school, suicide rates are significantly higher for LGBT uh, students. Uh, suicide rates uh, and bullying for trans students is mm -hmm. the highest uh, in the pyramid. Do you think that um, the these laws and these policies of, that are being implemented are worsening the situation on student on student bullying and hate? Mm. Do you think it's affecting it? I I certainly do because of course. Um, one of course. Uh, kids reflect back what they see and what they are experiencing so one what they hear yes one it can be from their parents their family um it's on tv it's on social media it's it's everywhere it's kind of an all-encompassing thing mm -hmm. and i think that within that you 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 take on some of that you you're seeing around you like oh something about these this group of people is different and I don't know what I should do about different. And I remember just so, a, just a year or two ago, you were telling me about how one of your eighth graders was, you know, using the word the term "gay" in, oh, yeah. in a derogatory, derogatory sense. Yes, and 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 I was the I guess I was the first person that told them. I was like, hey, I was like, so why why are we using that term? Is it meant to make that person feel bad? So are you saying that being gay is bad? And he was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't know. And I was like, you understand that I'm gay. Like, I'm, I'm part of the queer community. And I was like, so when you say that stuff, like, that's very hurtful to me because you're kind of saying, like, I'm wrong and I'm not okay. And, like, we have a good relationship. So could you be kind with what you say and think about it? And from that day on, he didn't. But it very much so is still, it's always in circulation, that kind of, I hear this term used in a derogatory way i've decided that that means that it's not a good thing and i'm going to continue to do that and it very much so because it's going to be talked about more because it's going to be on social media more and because the less that people that are from that community are able to speak up and be like hey that's harmful to me or hey i i'm part of that community the less that we're able to speak about it the more that they just kind of get in that echo chamber of like, oh, okay, I guess everybody's supposed to make fun of them and we're supposed to make them know that they're less than and hopefully bully them into being conforming into more like us. So It's sad to me that in 2023, we have somebody that's the governor of the state of Florida and running for president of the United States that uh, tells everyone, the only way I can be better is that you're less. Right. Which is what I just heard you Correct. say. It's quite shocking uh, to me. Um, one of the things that you've adopted that I'm, I'm, I want to hear a little about is the Florida Freedom to Read project that you've started this program. Tell me. Oh, I didn't start the program. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. But I did, um, I did hear about them. You know, when the, when the ban came from the K to 3, uh, I heard about them on Facebook and I, um, I jumped right in because I was like, this is not okay. And I cannot sit back as a reading teacher and allow this to happen or continue. And I need to find a way to fight it. And I need to, I need to hear that there are people out there that don't want that, you know? I'm sure they're there, but they're not being heard. 
So, um, you know, this this is a really, it's a great organization. Um, the and help Florida, us understand what do they do? So they go to uh, town hall meetings sometimes to be that voice of reason uh, when you have the Moms, Moms for Liberty, um, you know, trying to speak on, you know, books that should be banned. They go um, and share the other side or try to get that thought. Um, I, I know that uh, when textbook um uh, considerations are being adopted. Some of the people from that group will go and go, be the ones in there checking to make sure that, you know, that, that this textbook, you know, is the one that's being pushed through instead of this one, you know, because, you know, th this one has, you know, more of uh, the allowance of talking about everyone kind of thing, you know what I mean? So um, they're just, they're just getting their, their, their hands um, dirty. Lana, and it sounds like we need a counterbalance to Moms for Liberty. We do. Clearly, because the seven of them uh, that were handpicked by Governor DeSantis are having uh, havoc uh, in yeah. our school boards, not only uh, in every, you know many counties in Florida, but all over the country now uh, that it's being exported. And Lana, I'm curious from your standpoint, you make the decision uh, that, that you don't want to stay in the profession, at least from now. I hope you come back to it. But do you feel like the fight um, of what's happening in Florida and from Tallahassee against teachers and our kids in schools, uh, do you feel kind of that this is a David and Goliath kind of battle that's going on? Or how do you feel about it? I feel, I feel, <laughs> I, that's a good question. I'm, I don't know, it's, it's just hurtful. I, I don't, it's like I don't quite understand how we got here. I don't quite understand how, how this is a battle. How are their voices so loud? Yeah, I don't. Where are these people coming from? I Yeah, and I don't, because I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that do not see eye to eye with me. And when I have those conversations, there's like a, a glint of light there that I'm like, hey, wait, you, you've been told this narrative about who a group of people are and the danger that they pose. But that's not actually what you believe. But then I've heard, I've heard like white supremacist, like white supremacy propaganda yeah. within it. I've heard, I, I've heard things that I just, I didn't think that we were still battling in, in this like deep That's what of I'm a saying. way. Like, it's, it like, shouldn't, I, I feel like we shouldn't be We came so far, that. right, to like, to like, where are these people coming from? I just. I didn't think that this is the America that I we were knew, in. Like, I knew they were there, but I didn't know that people that maybe were like in the middle or had more of a like mm -hmm. liberal feel to them were still on the fence about basic human rights, right? I thought, okay, if you're in that middle space trying to figure out conservative, liberal, whatever title you're trying to figure out that. In the end, when certain things are proposed to you, you're going to be able to recognize them as not true, as a farce, as nah, I know people within this community. That's not what that is about. But it, it's, it's not. Apparently, they haven't had enough experience and haven't had enough time to get to know multiple people within said group that they are easily swayed towards a direction that seems to be counterintuitive to what their own morals are. So within this battle, it, it's like, I, like Goliath appeared out of nowhere to me it, mm -hmm. it, with the David right. and Goliath, like we are small but mighty, but at the same time, there's so many groups that are being attacked within this because it's not just LGBTQ, no. it's not just people of color, it's not just okay. immigrants, it's not just, there, there's just, there's so many, it's not just. So are you, uh, we talk about this all the time, um, uh, marginalized communities mm -hmm. um, are under attack across the board, religious diversity and faith. It's mm -hmm. the anti-Semitism that mm -hmm. we see, LGBT, black, Latino, uh, immigrants, but the majority of Americans, the majority of Floridians, of Floridians are women. 
they're under attack also. The right. decision making of their bodies, etc. These are all central themes. I'm curious, last question uh, to both of you as, as teachers, now a former teacher, hopefully one day you'll come back. <laughs> uh, do you do you have hope that we're going to win this battle? Do you do you see on the horizon? I maybe it, it's even I don't even see a path. But do you have hope that I want to have hope? I really do. That's why I'm here. I when I heard of the opportunity to speak, I I couldn't say no because we need more we need more of a of a battle. And uh I I'm scared though. I'm scared. And and I don't I don't think that, you know, lessens a person's bravery, but it's scary. You know, I have a daughter uh who's 1 years old and and a wife, and I am afraid for what my home right now is like. A place I was born and raised. And I'm thinking to myself, do I need to leave? You know, so it's scary. I want to have hope. I want to stay and fight. But my heart and my soul is with my family. And so how can I stay and fight when my family is being attacked? Do you have hope? I am trying my best. I have been a bit jaded recently. Um, I think with those one-on-one -on -one discussions, hearing some of the ideology and some of the excuses that people have made, um, it's broken my heart a lot, and it's made it difficult um, to think that there's going to be change. Uh, like, I know it's possible, but it's, like, it's just, it's a dark time. And one of the reasons I stopped teaching was because I wanted to help and hopefully bring more light into this time. Uh, but it's just, it's been really hard. And sometimes I, I can tell, I lose a bit of, I lose a bit of my hope and don't really exactly see how this is gonna turn around within like my lifetime, so. And I, and I thought that we were there. I thought that, that when, when we were able to get married and you know, I had hope then well, you know, I, I, and I hate to end our conversation um, on, uh, on, on, the, on the tone that we're ending the conversation, but perhaps it's the best. And the reason is, is because when I grew up, um, you know, I went, to, I went to college and I wanted to teach high school. And I got diverted in college and, and never went uh, and decided, no, um, I'm not doing that. And um, lots of reasons. And top of the list, you're not paid a fraction of what you should be paid. No. And you're not respected in a fraction of the way you should be respected in our community. And teachers are so incredibly valuable. But even with those two facts, I don't, I've never watched a time like what we're watching uh, teachers have to face. I have just heard teachers in Florida that are facing what they're facing in Florida say, you know, I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm scared for my my child. I'm scared for my partner. I'm scared for my home. I may even not be in a place where I can see hope in my entire lifetime. If there is a viewer watching this in our community and you do not think that teachers are important, I just don't really know where your heart is because that's what's going on in Florida. We know who's doing it. And we know why he is doing it. But you've just listened beautifully to the consequences to our students that want to learn and are curious and our teachers that want to help them. And our decision is, what are we going to do about it? I don't know what we're going to do about it yet, but it's got to be something. Lana Hubner Mims and Kaylee Miller Owens uh, a magnificent opportunity to talk to those people that have been in uh, the front lines.
uh, of what we've been watching for the past uh, year and a half. And I thank you so much on behalf of our entire LGBTQ community of being with us on Unapologetically Queer. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>